Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? An incredible fish. And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. With Pat McSherry. All right, what a fish. Andy Bioko. Wow. Get the colors on this fish. And Mike Anselmo. Man, he's bumping. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm James Holst. And before we get to today's show, we really need to talk about the conditions that have swept across the upper Midwest and basically destroyed our ice fishing season. At the end of last week's episode, I told everybody, be careful when you get out there on the ice over the next week. Well, I really didn't have an appreciation for how bad it was going to be. Uh, a long stretch of days, 60 degree temperatures, and a bunch of rain. Uh, there's areas across Minnesota that have received two to four inches of rain during that time period. And what it's done is basically destroyed so much of our ice, the little that remains that might be saved with some of the cold temperatures coming in the short term are probably best left unfished until some of that cold weather that's coming heals things up. So on today's episode, we're really gonna play it safe. I'm gonna be fishing with Josh Bolivant, manager of Trapper's Landing, people that have watched End Up Outdoors. You've probably seen that we filmed with Josh in the past. And of course, uh, Josh is available to film this week for all the wrong reasons. The ice on Leech Lake is completely wrecked. Uh, he's not allowing people out of his access, so he gets to come fish with me. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually fish Leech Lake, but we're gonna stay in the back bays. Uh, and that's very important because the main lake right now, it's a real mess. So we're gonna be targeting panfish. And our goal is going to be to try to find some of the giant crappie that can be found on Leech Lake. They've got some great water clarity here on Leech, some incredible weed lines, and we're gonna to hope to set up both anglers and underwater cameras along that weed line and see if we can't get in on some great crappie action. So stick around, it's Josh Bolivant and I on Leech Lake today on In Depth Outdoors. There we go. Look at you. I'm still cleaning up my area over here. <laughs> what? Right in the corner. Right in the How corner. far above the weeds are keeping it? Uh, about foot, six inches. Right there. Not so bad a one. No. Mm -mm. Well, I tell you what. If a guy is going to keep some crappies ice fishing, this is probably going to be the last day that we're going to get a chance to do it. So I wouldn't mind keeping some fish tonight. Yeah. Perfect size right there for it. Absolutely. Right now we're in the Otter Hub House, the resort, the big one, uh, because it is pouring rain outside. And as everybody knows that watches this show or pays attention to the weather at all, uh, we're on borrowed time here with the ice season. Um, I can never recall anything even close to what we're experiencing right now. End of February, uh, a lot of the main lakes, when I say main lakes, I mean like Leech and Mille Lacs, et cetera, they're all shut down to traffic right now. It was a horrible week. <laughs> throughout the Midwest here if you wanted to spend March ice fishing. So I guess I'm not giving up yet. There's a little bit of cold weather coming in the very near future, but I'm not sure it's going to be able to have enough punch to really heal up that ice much. So we're going to spend all of the time we can out here today and tonight fishing, whether it's raining or not. Whether it's raining. Looks like we got a good start right now. Well, one of us is. <laughs> I suppose you got you got me set up on the, the uh, inside edge of the weed line and I'm... <laughs> I'm gonna get my hinder kicked, aren't I? <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> we can switch spots halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what it takes. What we're fishing here is we've got a really nice weed line, uh, very healthy and green, standing up nice and straight and tall, even though it's you know very late in the ice season. And these crappies are gonna run the edge uh, throughout the evening. Uh, we should have some really nice crappies come in in that twilight period, four to 6 p.m. Uh, any fish we catch right now, midday like this is really a bonus. So we're kind of banking on, a, oh, here comes mine. Here comes my first one for the night. Oh, I Day, missed that Day, afternoon. Oh, I got mine. You got yours. And there's another one down there. Yep, there's a few of them down there. Yeah. Rain 
Sunshine, it doesn't matter. We're going to fish. That's a nice, nice crappie. One. Yeah. We've got very clear water, and we're up tight to these weeds like this. And these crappies, even though it's middle of the day, they're going to feed. They feel pretty darn safe, I'm sure, with those weeds at their back. They just run that weed line looking for a meal. It's not a way that I crappie fish very often in February. Late ice season, I'll fish like this, but with the weather that we've had, with as advanced as the ice melt is, I think it was, it was definitely your idea to come in here, get tight to the weeds, and see if we couldn't find some of these fish acting late February as if it's about time for the ice to go off. But he's coming home with me. Got that one on a uh, VMC red tubby jig with a wax worm on it, but the way that fish came up, he was very, very aggressive. It wouldn't have mattered what I had down there. So we're fishing in uh, about 15 feet above the weeds. Uh, obviously very good water clarity to have good green weed growth like that in that deep of water. And the reason I get to go, oh, hang out oh. with Josh is the ice conditions are so bad. I mean, uh, uh, Josh, as many of you know, is the manager at Trapper's Landing. They had to shut down their access to leach, at least temporarily, because it's, it's a wreck. Yeah, mud all over, and that causes, when the vehicles are tracking that mud out on the ice, it just ruins your access quick, and got to keep everyone safe. Which means I get to call Josh and say, hey, since you don't have anybody <laughs> at the resort, you want to go play? And now we're here. Here we are. Skeeter Boat Center is now a full-service Warrior Boats dealer, offering the complete line of Warrior Boats, all covered by reliable Yamaha Outboards. With dealerships located in Ramsey, Minnesota and Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, Skeeter Boat Center carries more Warrior Boat models in stock than any other Warrior Boat dealer. No matter which Warrior model is right for you, you'll receive the same attention to detail and service after the sale that made Skeeter Boat Center the number one Skeeter dealer by volume in the Midwest. For the best selection of fiberglass fishing boats and unmatched service, stop in or visit us online at SkeeterBoatCenter.com. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. This winter, set a trap for your next trophy with iFish Pro. Ideal for all species, iFish Pro is an innovative fishing system that allows an angler to use their favorite rod and reel instead of trying to manage the fish hand over hand. Oh, right Complete your ice fishing arsenal with iFish Pro, tactical ice gear that puts the fight back into tip up fishing. Look at that. Find oh, iFish Pro go. online at iFishPro.com or at your favorite sporting goods retailer. Can you believe how hard it's raining in February right now if this was snow? Oof. Yeah, it would pile up fast. I look at it like this, of course it's raining. I mean, after the week we've had, of course it is. Everybody that watches the show knows that we'd much rather be out on the ice running around on a beautiful day, punching lots of holes, but when it's raining like this, we've got uh, two choices. Uh, enjoy the uh, comfort here inside the, uh, the otter or stand outside until we ruin equipment. And uh, I don't want to do that. So. Yeah. We're gonna stay here inside the uh, the otter, uh, stay warm, stay dry, and hopefully catch a bunch of fish. Here comes, he comes, he comes. You got him, you got him, you got him, you got him, you got him. Oh, oh two of them <laughs> there. Look at. They're coming back. I mean, these these weed line crappies are so much more aggressive than like a basin crappie. Oh yeah. I nice. mean, I missed them the first time and they came back and hit. There you go. And there's still another one down there. Hopefully, he comes went the over wrong way. He didn't come my way. <laughs> I actually got to see him swim off. Nice. It's kind of disappointing. All kind of those cookie cutters right now, though. Uh, you know, this is our probably our last shot, at least in Minnesota, to take home some crappies. I have not kept a crappie all year, so now's the time. And they're perfect eaters. 
make a nice fish meal this mm -hmm. week. I mean, if we get some 12, 13 inch plus, I'll let, I'll let those go. Again, came shooting right up through those weeds. Uh, he was on a mission. What a difference from, you know, fishing like this versus being out in, over a basin, you know, where so many of the crappies are found this time of year. And those fish can be really, really difficult to get to eat some days, you know. They just, they're so lethargic. These ones are in here for one reason only. That's to eat. Look at them down there. Yeah, they're coming towards you. Oh, they are. Got him? Got him. Well, we might have uh, saw that one on the camera. I can't guarantee, but uh, there was three, four of them there. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, I was just uh, trying to check the height of it just to make sure it was where it needed to be. Yeah, still a couple through there. Another one of those nice little keepers there. Mm-hmm. Well, how about we just do this? Let's just plan to catch all of our keepers here during the day, and in that last waning hour, let's catch a bunch of big fish. Sounds good to me. Plan. Yeah, like it's going to work like that. <laughs> <laughs> There's still another one down there. So another? sweet. <laughs> Look at how tall the weeds are, though, mm -hmm. for this time of year. Yeah, so much of the stuff you see, it's just sloppy. It's all tipped over. It's green. And this stuff is, like, really healthy. In-depth outdoors. Spot on the spot ID. In today's Spot on the Spot ID, we get to share a fairly unique pattern here at In-Depth Outdoors in that we don't get to fish for crappies very often related to deep weed growth. So much of what we do is all about chasing crappies suspended out over a basin or deep flats. So tonight, our plan is to use this heavy, healthy weed growth to our advantage. Now, uh, you can see where we're positioned here. Uh, we're outside one of the real popular panfish bays on Leech Lake. I'm gonna zoom in here just a little bit. And what's of Real key importance here is, I'm gonna turn some shading on as well. What's very important here is you can see that there's some deeper water that runs up into this bay. I mean, this is a huge bay, thousands of acres, and so much of it has healthy green weed growth. But at this time of the year, even though we've seen some very warm weather, a lot of these crappies are spending a lot of time out in deeper water. And that's very important to this pattern because what we're doing here is we're using weed growth nearest the deepest water available here in the Narrows to really tip the odds in our favor. We know the crappies are gonna spend a lot of their time during the day uh, if the sun is out, out in deeper water. Come prime time or any time you've got low light levels like we have today during the rainstorm, these fish start running up against these weed lines that are adjacent to that deeper water where they come in to feed. So uh, one of the things we weren't able to show you today is how much time we spent positioning the otter hub. Uh, we got a number of holes punched along that uh, weed to deep water transition and we used the underwater camera on our Markham to really make sure that we didn't bury ourselves back in the weeds. This weed growth is so heavy that if you're off by just a few feet, you're really gonna have a hard time intercepting those crappies. It's gonna be difficult for them to come find you. So when you set up on one of these deep weed edges, make sure you've got your holes right on the edge. And if you look in the uh, underwater video that we've shown here today in the show, it just breaks off into nothingness when you look out past Josh's hole. That is perfect positioning to make sure that any crappies that come along that edge are gonna see our bait. So make sure you give this a try and keep in mind that as you progress deeper into winter, get into spring, those fish will stop using this deeper water disperse back into that bay up in the shallows where they're going to feed heavily right up until ice out. Markham's new pocket-sized handheld underwater cameras, the Recon 5 and 5 Plus, use a 5-inch color display to deliver superior screen detail and employ a combination of dark water LED and infrared lighting to punch through the darkness. The Recon 5 Plus adds a built-in DVR and on-screen display for critical information, previously only available on full-sized underwater viewing systems. This winter, see what you've been missing with a Recon from Markham Technologies, the undisputed leader in underwater cameras. Everything you'd expect from a premium quality fish house and so much more. Glacier combines superior craftsmanship and premium quality materials to produce a comfortable and enjoyable mobile base camp for your next outdoor adventure. Available in a variety of models, a Glacier Ice House offers more standard features, more usable space, and a better fit and finish than the competition. Visit our website at GlacierIceHouse.com to find a dealer near you and see why a Glacier Fish House is the ultimate way to play. At Aluma, we're in it for the long haul. That's why we make the longest lasting, most rugged trailers on the road. Flatbeds, bike haulers, tilt trailers, and enclosed. If you have a lot to move, we've got your way to move it. Our lightweight aluminum trailers will handle even your heaviest loads. At Aluma, we are right behind you with an industry-leading five-year warranty. 
because every trip and every load is valued. Skeeter Boat Center is now a full-service Warrior Boats dealer, offering the complete line of Warrior Boats, all covered by reliable Yamaha Outboards. With dealerships located in Ramsey, Minnesota and Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, Skeeter Boat Center carries more Warrior Boat models in stock than any other Warrior Boat dealer. No matter which Warrior model is right for you, you'll receive the same attention to detail and service after the sale that made Skeeter Boat Center the number one Skeeter dealer by volume in the Midwest. For the best selection of fiberglass fishing boats and unmatched service, stop in or visit us online at SkeeterBoatCenter.com. Oh, here comes mine. Got him. Oh, you got him. I Look got at him. That. Yes. He came and inhaled that. That was cool to see on the camera. Yes, it was. Look at that. <laughs> Come here, fish. Yeah, we got that one uh, on the camera. I got that one on the jig. Perfect. Yes. Pug bug. I'm going to keep that guy. Perfect eater. We just had thunder and lightning. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Uh, just fishing a, a, a one inch uh, VMC or Trigger X, excuse me, minnow, white, with that red pug bug head. That's a 16th ounce. And it was just clear as day. Watch that crappie just tip up out of the weeds, come up and just grab that bait. You know, I think the key to, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the key to getting set up on these fish is, I mean, you can probably catch a fish or two just by getting on top of the weed pile. Mm -hmm. It's all about getting on the edge. And what people didn't see was, and we couldn't film it because we were outside in the rain, was punching holes and just using that camera to get right on that edge. I mean, you can see with the camera that we do have down in the water, we're recording that as well. Uh, we can look right off the edge out in the deeper water and these crappies will run right along that edge. And of course they're looking for a meal. The thing not to do is get buried back in that deepest weeds away from the edge because it becomes so hard for the crappies to see your baits. The other thing too to notice is on this weed when you're on that edge, it's a little bit sparse. So they'll use that as coming through as their camouflage to kind of ambush and come up through. That one probably came on the edge, snuck in there and came right up over top and hit your jig. You now leech is of course known for perch, walleye, musky, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, you just don't get a, a lot of talk about the quality of the panfish. And you guys have huge bluegills, obviously some really nice crappies. Um, why is it that you think it, guys just don't talk about it much? I mean, is, I think it's kind of that hidden secret, you know, like some of the guys, there's a few guys out there that really love fishing for them, but also it's a hard, hard thing because there's so big of these expanses like this out there. As we look in the bay that we're in right now, it's five miles long by another three, four miles wide. Sure. So it's hard to find them sometimes out there, but. Some of the thickest and tallest crappies that I see each year come from leech. You can almost spot them uh, in photos because yeah. they're just so tall and so wide. You know, these are good eaters, but certainly not indicative of the top end trophy potential. Uh, you'll see 16, of course, and then even 17 inch fish once in a while come from Leech Lake. Like that crappie? Got oh, it. Oh, there you go. There he is. Like that one. Man, do they come. Every one of these oh, weed I line got crappies. One. Look at. Ooh, look at that one. You're getting a little bit bigger. Yeah, look at that one. <laughs> <laughs> I actually might let that fish go. I switched to a red shiner tumbler spoon here, just thinking that I'm kind of buried back in the weeds just a little bit. If it wasn't raining out, I'd probably move this house five feet that way, and then I'd get it in your hole. <laughs> <laughs> look at so this. I was thinking that just having some more flash would help to call these fish in. I'm going to let that fish go. There's another one coming your way right now. Yep. Get that down there. See you later, fish. Yes, he is. Now, if I get him to turn my way. Hopefully. He kind of came up towards mine. I mean, these fish just come in violent. They just And they're there. That was amazing. I mean, he came shooting out of nowhere for that spoon. Basically, every fish has done that. What I don't want to do is drop the spoon so deep that I snag the, the vegetation, because I don't want to like kick up a lot of you know silt or whatever in the water column. I want to keep it nice and clean. But yeah, I mean that fish just bolted in from the, the left, come right up underneath it, boom, grabbed it right away. I mean these fish behave so differently than like a basin crappie. You know the basin crappie is just the slow upward march, dip, 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 and these just shoot right through the weeds. Sometimes here at In-Depth Outdoors uh, we get to pick from lots of options. Do we want to fish walleyes or northerns or lake trout? 
we were really out of options. Uh, there's, <laughs> you, we had to come this far north just to find ice. Um, in fact, your last fish, you were kind of looking at your phone, we were looking at pictures of all the trucks that have dropped through uh, across the state, across the upper Midwest in the last few days. So uh, ice travel right now is really dicey. So this bay off of Leech Lake um, was the logical choice for us. I mean, he shut down his access for good reason going out to Leech itself, but uh, this back bay just doesn't have, hasn't had a lot of, um, you know, major vehicle traffic, doesn't seem to have any major cracks on it, pretty safe. Good course, easy access. Yeah, and we didn't, we didn't come out here with the truck, I mean, it was snowmobiles, so just playing it safe and finding a way to have a good time in a rainstorm. <laughs> Markham Technologies unleashes GPS with the release of the RT9, the first to combine sonar, underwater camera, and Navionics mapping in a 9-inch ruggedized touchscreen tablet. Built on the Android operating system, the Wi-Fi-enabled RT9 can be used as a standalone tablet or snap into the cradle or performance pack for unmatched portability. Ice Electronics the way they were meant to be. Sonar, GPS, underwater camera, one unit. Experience the RT9 from Markham Technologies. Lithium Laser and Lithium Chipper from Strikemaster deliver power on demand with the push of a button and an industry-leading 50-volt lithium-ion battery. Reach for the Lithium Laser if you need unmatched hole-punching speed or opt for the Lithium Chipper if you need the durability of chipper blades for opening old holes or drilling in dirty ice. No matter which auger is right for the way you fish, reach for a Strikemaster Lithium, the electric auger with power to spare. Fish. Yeah, watching them come through the weeds on the Markham. There's a few of them down there. Ooh, here comes mine. I got Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't think he's the biggest crappie I'm going to catch all day. They're supposed to be getting bigger at dark, but this one's actually uh, a little short of what they've been. Oh, there you go. Cousins. <laughs> Absolutely. Where we're at right now, we've got kind of failing daylight, and we're starting to see more and more fish come through. That perfect eater in my book. Perfect. Mine's smarter than yours. <laughs> and uh, really haven't changed up much. Been bouncing back and forth between a uh, a one twentieth of an ounce tumbler spoon, and then that same jig and plastic I've been fishing throughout much of the afternoon. That tumbler spoon is a red shiner. It's got a glow red back, and I threw a couple of wax worms on that. And the reason I switched back to this jig was I had maybe that crappie there come in a couple times and uh, just kind of come up hard on it but not ready to eat it so drop that jig back down that fish swallowed it right down and uh, you're still fishing the jig too aren't you? Yeah same jig except I got the white one. It's basically the exact opposite of what I've got. You've got uh, the red body with a white head I've got a red body with a, or a red head with a white body. Yep. see your dark shadow back there. Yeah. There he is. I don't think he's your biggest fish of the day. I saw him turn sideways. No, no, he's stuck. Did you get him in some weeds? Oop, there he is. There he <laughs> right is. Right under the ice. Right on the ice. Not my biggest. No, they're supposed to be getting bigger as it gets dark. <laughs> you know that, right? I do know that one. Eh, a little bit small. Yes, he is. Bloop. Yeah, I should probably switch over to sonar. I don't want to turn the light on because I think that's a little unnatural under the water. I don't, I don't know what you think. I mean, yeah. Staying dark is. They're coming in on that dark like two, three at a time now. Blow them up good again. Yeah, I think I'm going to. Uh... Sonar. I had 
him over here, but he's gone, man. Oh, there he is over here. Oh, there he is. You dog. <laughs> <sighs> Not as big as I thought he was on the graph, but. <laughs> We're going the wrong direction here. <laughs> I guess they're supposed to get bigger, aren't they? They are supposed to get bigger. It hardly matters. For how lousy it is outside. Yeah, well, you bet. For how lousy it is out there, it's awful darn nice in here. And it seems weird to say, but we're on borrowed time for ice fishing here in Minnesota, or at least the southern two-thirds of it. I know you've got a little bit of a cold snap coming, but I think I saw in the forecast you're going to be back in the 40s next Friday. Already. Mm -hmm. As long as we get no more rain would be nice. You mean more than we're getting right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see any more in the forecast. This has definitely been a weird year. I might switch back to a jig. I'm using just a tiny little flash uh, champ spoon, just a little glow spoon now. And that fish came in and eyeballed me, but I think what I did is I uh, pulled him up out of the weeds. He took a look at me and went right over to you. Straight over to me. Bonk. Even still in the dark. I mean, they come up with a head of steam. Like they're gonna do some damage. I mean, that last one pulled off of mine, but he was covering some ground. He hit it hard. A lot harder than the size he was. Yeah, I suppose. You can just keep attracting him for me. That worked just fine. I'm willing to play my role. <laughs> well, that brings us to the end of today's show. And what you saw here today is really indicative of what we've experienced here over the last couple of weeks. And I've been the host of In-Depth Outdoors for 11 years now. And I've seen a lot of things that have made fishing interesting, difficult at times. And today's show is a great example of what these unseasonal temperatures have done to the fishing. We thought we had a great plan, expected these fish to come in under low light periods, and wouldn't you know it, everything bit best right in the middle of the day. That's just the way it's been here over the last couple weeks. When you start to see extended runs of 60 degree temperatures in February, even the fish don't know which ends up. So we did get some great fish on the ice today. Our ice season is not over. Uh, I do want to thank Josh Bolivant for spending some time with me today on the ice. And next week, I'll be up on Lake Winnipeg with Calvin Schwiel. So uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see everybody next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at In-Depth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.